The youngest Osmond, James Arthur Osmond, also known as Little Jimmy Osmond, has been familiar to the world since 1967, at which point he was only four years old. His siblings became noticed in the early 1960s, eventually forming the world-famous musical group known as the Osmonds, consisting of Alan, Wayne, Meryl, Jay, Donnie, Marie, and finally, Jimmy. Verl and Tom didn't participate. All of them except James were raised in Ogden, Utah, USA. Jimmy didn't just take the fame that was guaranteed by birth, though. He built his own little empire as a rather successful entrepreneur with a visionary mind that allowed for great accomplishment in the music industry. James' first personal achievement came in 1968 at the tender age of five when he achieved his first gold album for the song My Little Darling, which he sang in Japanese. He was the first member of the family to obtain that reward, which showed everyone just how much promise the child held. Parents George Verrill Sr. and Olive Osmond were members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and resided in Jimmy's birthplace with their nine children. The brothers began performing barbershop music for neighborhood audiences in 1958 so as to help support Verrill and Tom, both of whom had a significant hearing impairment since birth. The brothers eventually caught the attention of Lawrence Welk, who invited them to audition but was eventually unable to follow through. However, while on that trip, they visited Disneyland, where Tommy Walker saw them performing with the Dapper Dans on Main Street and hired them for a segment in the film entitled Disneyland After Dark, which aired in 1962. This led to an invitation from Andy Williams's father, Jay, to appear on The Andy Williams Show, which ran from 1962 to 1969, during which time Donnie joined the group, making it a five-member band prior to the induction of Marie and Jimmy as well. After this, they concentrated on popular music instead of variety shows, so they signed with Uni Records in 1967, releasing a single record with Flower Music on the front and I Can't Stop on the flip side, before eventually achieving fame in 1971. Jimmy himself made history when he released Long Haired Lover from Liverpool in 1972, as it earned him the Guinness Book of World Records honor for being the youngest performer to have a number one single on the UK singles chart. His success continued with acting roles such as Troy Phillips in two episodes of Fame and as Tom D. Fitzgerald in the film The Great Brain. In 1985, Jimmy met Manuel Montoya at A&M Records, which led to his only Spanish recording entitled Siempre Tu. This opened up opportunities for him to tour Latin American markets, including Mexico, Venezuela, Puerto Rico, and Chile. In addition to often performing with his older siblings on stage and television, Jimmy served as a juror on the 1986 edition of the OTI Festival. He also took over the operations of Andy Williams' Moon River Theater in Branson, Missouri, where he still produces and books shows today. The 2012 Osmonds album, I Can't Get There Without You, featured Jimmy on lead vocals, which marked the first time that he sang leads instead of Merrill, who usually held that role during their heyday in the early 1970s. Throughout the course of his career, the youngest Osmond had the opportunity of meeting some of the greatest names ever to have graced his line of work, including Frank Sinatra and Elvis Presley. Furthermore, Jimmy starred in musical theater productions such as Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat and Boogie Nights at Grand Theater Blackpool, among others. He had also appeared in several British TV shows, including I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, All-Star Family Fortunes, Come Dine With Me, All-Star Family Fortunes, and Everybody Dance Now, totaling 75 celebrity appearances from 1975 to 2018. In 2014, Jimmy authored the children's picture book entitled Awesome Possum Family Band, which was semi-autobiographical. 2015 saw him honored with Iowa Wesleyan University's award of an honorary doctorate of arts and humanities, making him the first Osmond family member to receive this distinction, delivering the keynote commencement speech on the 9th of May. In 2004, Jimmy was busy working on his own TV show entitled Jimmy Osmond's American Jukebox in a studio in Missouri. A threat had been looming over his physical wellness since the day he was born, but only manifested itself when he turned 40 years of age. It turned out that little Jimmy was suffering from a rather typical and commonplace congenital heart condition that resulted in a stroke. As he told the Daily Mail in 2009, all five years after it occurred, there was nothing to be done about the sudden onset of symptoms that took everyone by surprise. He stated that, It came on so fast and I could hardly see. It was as if I had tunnel vision. Somehow, I managed to get to the end of the show. How I drove home, I have no idea and I shouldn't have done. 
because I couldn't even see the lines in the middle of the road. But I was so desperate to get back to my family and go to bed. As was to be expected of someone exacerbating the bodily shock, brought on by a stroke through added physical exertion as well as mental exhaustion, the next one of the worst in Jimmy's life. He said, The following morning I tried to get up, but felt so dizzy that I fell over. My vision was still bad and this terrible headache was gnawing away right at the base of my skull. Jimmy still remained relatively cool-headed, even with a panic beginning to set in. Suggesting to his wife, Michelle, that he's probably only having a rather intense migraine as a result of overworking himself in the preceding weeks. Fortunately, she still convinced him to go in for a checkup anyway, having him enter the car that she subsequently drove to a local hospital for his brain scan. It was soon stated by the doctors that the issue on hand was indeed far more serious than a severe headache, revealing a stroke as the actual reason for Jimmy's discomfort. It was caused by small clots or emboli blocking the blood flow in extremely thin vessels and depriving parts of the brain of oxygen. Thankfully, there was no lasting damage, although he still suffered from headaches and difficulty reading for the next four to five years. The idea that Jimmy was overworked, although inaccurately used to describe the reason for his supposed headache, had plenty of merit to it, as he had indeed been dedicating too much time to his career for a lengthy period preceding the stroke. Osmond stated, I had been working on 12 shows a week and other projects, so I never really had the time to relax. I'd been feeling pretty exhausted and assumed that the stroke had been something to do with that. That said, the risk of a stroke was still supposed to be rather low, as the singer hadn't had any previous heart-related issues, at least to his knowledge. He said, I never had high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or any other problems that could have given any clues as to why I would have a stroke. The doctors decided to take a look at my heart. Thus, Jimmy underwent a bubble echocardiogram, an ultrasound scan of the heart that is followed by an injection of a bubble of saline into the arm, which allows for blood flow inside of the chest cavity to be easily monitored. The procedure revealed something rather unexpected, a patent foramen oval, PFO, which is a hole in the septal wall serving as the barrier between the heart's upper right and left chambers. It was identified as a birth defect that went without detection until the test was complete, as Jimmy had never been given an echocardiogram despite having gone through numerous insurance medicals. No abnormal heart sounds were detected during these examinations, and his blood pressure and cholesterol levels were normal. The PFO was likely present since birth, but went unnoticed due to its small size, about the size of a cent coin. It can cause problems such as stroke or migraine headaches if left untreated, so Jimmy was lucky to have found it prior to suffering any permanent injury. He said, My doctors explained that over time, tiny blood clots that he described as particles had traveled from my heart to my brain, eventually forming a large clot, and this is what had caused the stroke. He warned me that unless I had immediate surgery to close the hole, that I was at risk of having another stroke or worse. It turns out that Jimmy was simply unlucky to have the condition, as British Heart Foundation's June Davidson pointed out that people don't usually have symptoms, but one of the biggest risks associated with having a PFO is a stroke, and those who have PFOs are more likely to have migraines. We do know that two in 100 babies are born with it. A minute contraption called an occluder was then carefully placed inside the singer's heart by insertion through a blood vessel from the groin area. This device automatically opens and shuts on both of its sides, which allows it to be pulled by the blood pumping into the heart's wall, eventually closing the hole caused by PFO. The heart's regenerative tissue eventually engulfs the colliter and thus heals itself with no difficulties. Everything seemed to go for the better, and the potential problem stayed that way for over a decade. However, disaster struck once again on the 27th of December, 2018, when true drama broke out at UK's prestigious Birmingham Hippodrome. While pantomiming as Captain Hook in the theater's staging of Peter Pan, Jimmy found himself in a situation similar to that of 2004, except that he was now well aware of what was really happening. Another stroke was diagnosed not long afterwards, when the then 55-year-old singer was rushed to the hospital in an ambulance. In order to immediately address public concerns on the matter, the theater spokesperson said that he's grateful for all the well wishes and will be taking time out in the new year. Osmond was promptly replaced in the play by fellow actor Darren Day. Fiona Allen, the chief executive and artistic director of the Birmingham Hippodrome, had more to add on the matter, making it obvious that the U.S. superstar was indeed dearly missed by all of his co-workers. She said, 
Everyone here at Birmingham Hippodrome has been deeply saddened to hear of Jimmy's sudden illness. She added that Jimmy loved being a part of the Hippodrome's well-renowned panto, and his portrayal of Captain Hook was both dastardly and heartwarming. He won the adoration not just of our audiences, but also of our staff. We all send Jimmy and his family very best wishes for a speedy recovery. Although Jimmy himself is yet to appear in front of the camera since then, his brother Merrill was kind enough to inform the audiences of his brother's situation in 2020. He told interviewer Alex Belfield that everything is under control, stating, You know, it's great. I've seen him about two times now, and Jimmy had his issues there. But you know what? He's getting better every day. Merrill even made a point out of the fact that the hiatus is actually rather enjoyable for Jimmy, explaining, and the thing about it is, which is really cool, is he's never had a chance to spend that kind of time with his family like he's doing now. They're going places. Jimmy runs like crazy now, jogs everywhere. The audience even got to find out that the youngest Osman has a new hobby as well, painting. According to Merrill's account, it looks like his little brother is getting better by the day. This is expected to be ongoing in the last month of 2022 as well, which, although still keeping the celebrity out of the limelight, gives fans much less to worry about in the long run. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos, which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.